What's up? Welcome back to 918 Disc Golf. Today I've got a bit of a special treat for you. We're out here at Blue Flame, a local private course here in the Tulsa area, and today I'm going to be taking you through some of my tournament prep for an upcoming PDGA A tier for amateurs only here in the Tulsa area where this course will be featured. Get over to hole one to get into it. Now, before we get started, a couple things to clarify. One, it looks like the course is in the short pin position. I imagine that that'll be changed to the long pin position. So I'll speak to both uh, because I am practicing and I imagine it'll be in longs when we do come out here for the tournament. Two, I would say pretty much all other conditions in the course are in good shape besides the grass being maybe a little tall. I'd say all the other tournament conditions are met. We've got ripping winds of 20 to 25 miles an hour, beautiful day for disc golf, and plenty of trees that have grown in for me to smack on. All right, but getting into hole one, we've got a 300 foot par three, plays right out there underneath the tree. The long pin position shows 375, which is just a little bit further back and tucked to the left. I imagine I would just disc up to a distance driver. Right now we're gonna go fairway because the ceiling's a little low and uh, with it being windy, I just don't trust my mids. Wouldn't be a tournament prep video if I didn't go too off the top. This time we're gonna go with T-Bird. The other one was an Instinct, which is pretty much the same disc, though this one does have the tendency to flip up a little bit more. Oh yeah, I like that a lot better. Now just fade. Ace. Not quite an ace, but uh, I'd say the second one's pretty parked. Yeah, we're definitely gonna take the second shot, just on the first hole though. T-Bird, right at five feet. Now this one I'm not quite sure if it's on the longs or the shorts. If it's in the short pin position, we're looking at a 600 foot par four. If it's in the long, we're looking at a little bit longer, 740 foot par four. It looks like there's supposed to be an OB line all along the left-hand side of the fairway, and then there's a pond up there on the right uh, that looks like it also plays OB. Given that this looks like it's a two-shot hole, we're gonna lead off with an Emperor off the tee. If that goes well, that might just be my play, but if it doesn't, we might try something a little different. I like that. Ooh, good lift. I'd say it probably got out there about I don't know, maybe like 380. I'm gonna throw a second one for good measure. We're gonna go with the uh, pro boss on this one, but I will be taking my first. I like that a lot better though. Something flippy. Oh, look at that wind catch it. That one probably got out there about like 430 or so. I just about couldn't find my disc. It's like buried underneath some of this grass out here. It's just super thick. Right here, left with about, looks like we have about 230 feet into the green. So I definitely think it's in the short pin position as well. So we're gonna take our quake on a forehand and just try to play it just above the rocks. Fade back. Yeah. I might be a little deep, but I think I'm actually pretty close to the basket. Just from the way that it looked like it faded in. And just for some comparison, this is where my boss landed. And it looks like over on that left side is gonna be where the long pin position is. So getting more distance off the tee, definitely beneficial. So to the right of you guys, there is a pond over here or like a little body of water. And I thought that's what I was talking about on the tee sign, maybe it was, but there's also some water back here behind the basket. Luckily, I sat right here. So it's a nice little five foot tapping again. All right, so I do stand corrected. This one is actually in the long pin position. This one's gonna be a par four, 625 feet, uh, well down there by the fence. You can probably see it whenever I zoom in post, but way down there. So I'm just gonna try to get as far off the tee as I can and have a nice and easy upshot. We're gonna go back to the boss that I threw in the last hole for my second shot and just blast it. I did not get over on that enough. Ideally, I would probably say if you've got a good forehand, that would probably be the play. But we're gonna try one more. This one I'm gonna go with the uh, iBlend Ferro. Try to hit more of the line I was envisioning with a backhand turnover. And just try to put it past that short pin, which is about 380 feet out there. I could get big distance if it comes out. It did not. All right, so this is where my shot landed. It took me like five minutes to find my disc. I guess we're probably about 300 feet out from the basket. I'm gonna take my more stable Wraith, put it on a forehand on the left-hand side, see if I can't put it close to the basket. Oh, there's that AM forehand for you. Don't go out of bounds. Okay, well, we didn't go past the fence, so I'm gonna guess that we're safe. I guess we'll see what we have when we get up there. All right, not too bad, about 45 feet to the basket. Get a little stepper, see if we can't get another birdie.
sometimes they want to drop for you. Here we are at hole four, another one that is in the long pin position. It's going to be 440 feet out there to the right. Par three. I'm going to go boss. I'm going to throw it on a turnover. We have some headwind to contend with. I'm just trying to clear as much distance as I can so that I don't take a bogey. Come out of it. Oh, it's panning. Oh, I got a whole 300 feet, guys. No joke, I think I really did only go 300 feet. All right, we're gonna take an AVR3 for the approach shot. Grass is tall enough, so I'm not worried about a skip. We'll just play it in, nice hyzer into the basket. Now fade, maybe? That thing doesn't like to fade. Rolling up on hole five, I am beginning to see a theme here and I hope you guys like watching distance drivers fly. This one is also in the long pin position. It's gonna be 505 feet, par three, which I guess if you have a cannon for an arm, more power to you. I'm gonna play for the par, Emperor off the tee. I think that's right up by the short pin, which is about 345 feet. Do have a headwind, so. I have baby arms, guys. Well, it looks like I actually cleared about 375 because I'm a little bit past the short pin. We're just gonna go a little zone approach into the basket. Um, to keep me bogey free. Okay, that is probably the first time a disc golf park basket has not absolutely done me dirty. There is no reason that that putt should have caught. Okay, here we go. Now this is my kind of disc golf. Hole six, 235 foot par three right out there. Ace run hole. But you know what they're really doing? They're trying to trip you up because just before this hole, you had five holes of just mashing on your disc and now you have to have a touch shot. I like it, I see what you're doing. All right, we're gonna go zone off the tee backhand. Should be fine, yeah. I mean, it's right there, so we gotta ace run it a couple times. We're gonna go with a fuse, and then an origin. Fuse looks really good. Nope, not gonna fade. <laughs> All right, the origin was pathetic, so I gotta give you one more with the Pathfinder. We're just throwing them with too much Anheuser. All right, and we'll give ourselves a little shorty straddle practice to get four down here. Now, based on the last hole, I don't know that the blue or alternate pin position can be played on that one because it looks like it's pretty deep tied into the woods and pretty rough back there. So it might stay on that little short one right there, which I'm okay with. Now, about a third of the way through the course, I'd say this course is pretty cool, but then you get to hole seven. And this is freaking awesome. You get to throw across this little pond thing that they have. You cross a cool bridge to get over here. It's either in the shorts or the longs. Can't really see from here because it goes around the corner to the left, but they're practically the same shot. They're both par threes either way. The short is 350 feet. The long is 375. So we're gonna try to break the corner. We're gonna go rive, put some hyzer on it. That's probably not gonna break the corner. All right, we'll throw a second one. All right, this time we're gonna go with the boss. Same idea. Oh, weird lift. But that got all the way around the corner. And then I guess we'll see where it plays from there. All right, it's definitely in the longer of the two positions. Hopefully I am not on any poison ivy, but uh, if I am, rope to my legs. We're gonna go zone. Got a little bit of headwind to contend with. We're just gonna put on a little bit of hyzer around this tree in front of me. Drop. There we go, that'll work. If you're curious, the boss parked the short pin, but of course that's not the one we're playing to today, so gotta tap this out to uh, keep my bogey free round alive. Can't say I'm not happy with the putting today, especially considering my more recent performances that you guys are aware of, so we'll take it. This will be a little bit hard to track probably in post, but here we have hole eight. 255 foot par three, the long pin position is gonna be some 465 feet. It doesn't even look like they have it on the T sign. Um, if it's in that position, it's a par four, but 
We're playing the short one today. We're gonna try to flex something down the middle on the right-hand side of that tree. So we're gonna go quake. We're gonna flex it down the right side. As long as it holds, gets around the tree. Oh, oh, I hit the pole. Well, you can't really get any closer than that unless you're in the chains. So I'll take it. We are absolutely shredding right now. Welcome to the last hole in the front. Here we have hole nine, 680 foot par four, way out there. Uh, just wanna get something as far out there as you can and then uh, make your upshot. It seems to be the name of the game out here. We're gonna go rive off the tee. I got a lucky, well, it got a lucky kick and then it got the kick it deserved. Guess I shouldn't have said that we were shredding. As I'm sure you can see, we still have a ways to go. So we're just gonna go back to the same disc and get ourselves some more distance. I like that. I think that should be plenty to work with. Thankfully, this is all we were left with, about 200 foot up shot. We're just gonna place this as close as we can, hopefully within C1. Oh, that's so low. Well guys, we might be looking at our first bogey of the round. This would be a definite deep C2 save for par if I hit it. So we're gonna go with a little stepper. Just barely missed the cage. Not unhappy with that, but let's see what player two does. Can player two make the correction? No. Before we get into the back nine, I do want to talk on something real quick because I haven't mentioned it throughout the video, but all of the tee pads out here are turf, but it definitely feels like it's done right. I've played on some turf tee pads before and it felt like if these got wet, these would actually probably hold up just fine in wet conditions. Don't know, I haven't tried to play on them in wet conditions, but these just feel like they would. So very impressed, not the biggest turf tee pad fan, but I gotta say they did a good job. But getting into hole 10, we've got a 350 foot par three. It looks to me like this shot calls for a forehand or a very touchy backhand turnover shot. I, however, am gonna go with a forehand with a rive and see how it does. If that doesn't go well, I will give the backhand turnover a shot. Well, we're gonna give the backhand turnover a shot. Now for the turnover to work out, I feel like I do have to disc up quite a bit. So we're gonna go with a Wraith. This is the flippiest uh, distance driver I have. Give it a shot and see what it does. Uh oh. Somehow found a way up to the basket. Pretty sure I cleared all of about uh, 80 feet off the tee pad, so quite a bit left to go. We're gonna go forehand from here with our fireball and just try to get it as close as possible. Oh, don't fade too far. All right, it's at least a look at the basket. Straddle 40 footer, not the ideal putt that I'd like to have, but still a putt to save the par. Would really like to just not take two bogeys in a row. You know, I really liked it pretty much the whole way there and then it just looked like it dropped. Now the bugs out here are very gnarly. I will say that. So uh, I didn't bring bug spray, but if you ever come play out here, definitely consider it. Hole 11, this one looks to be in the short pin position, 365 foot par three right out there. OB is gonna be in this creek, which I don't know how you'd find your way over to, but it is does exist on this left-hand side. And uh, we're gonna go Emperor. I'm feeling kind of weak right now. So we're just gonna disc up a little bit more than we need to. I might find that creek. I don't know how close the uh, creek plays into the side of this hole, but I did not turn that as much as I wanted to. Luckily, no lost disc, but lots of poison ivy over here. So don't end up on the left. That's about 15 feet to the left of the basket. We'll take it. Hey, at least we didn't take another bogey in a row. That's all I can say. I'm just praying that the gunky stuff on the bottom of this disc is not uh, any of the uh, poison ivy oil. Hole 12 looks to be in the long pin position, 400 feet right out there. The T sign shows a hyzer, uh, but I am so desperately wanting to try a flex shot down the middle. So that's what I'm gonna do. Same disc, Emperor. I'm gonna try to beat this tree in the middle on the right hand side. It's a very skinny gap, but I think I can hit it. 
hit the gap, but that thing's turning way too much. All right, let me try that again with the rive. This thing will want to fight out a little bit more. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's still not close to the basket, but I'll be a good sport. We'll try the hyzer line. We'll try the flippy boss. I unfortunately lost my other boss earlier on a shot that will never be seen on footage. I mean, that's, I don't know, maybe it is a freaking hyzer, dude. Definitely executed the shot, but not the right selection. We've probably got like 150 feet in from here, but I am interested to see where my rive and my boss ended up. Just go in the basket. All right, the rive ended up right here, which is technically closer than the boss that ended up right here. However, I think either shot is still better than throwing my emperor up the middle. But taking a three on this hole is not a bad thing, so we'll take it and we'll move on. And welcome to hole 13. Looks to be another long bomber, par four, 620 feet, plays way out there. OB is long, there's a creek behind the basket, but I don't think you're gonna be able to find that very easily. We're just gonna go rive off the tee, just put it out there as far as possible. Get off the tree, please. Thank you. And no skip, which I don't expect today. The grass is pretty tall. Based on where I'm at, it definitely looks like distance can be helpful, but you also really gotta make sure you place it in the right spot, which where I'm at is fine. Uh, but if I was a little bit more to the left, I'd probably feel a little bit better about throwing a forehand. But that is still what we're gonna do. Fireball approach shot. We're probably about 270 out. Fight out of it. Yep. I think I am inside the circle, which I will be completely happy with if I am. Probably right at circle's edge for this one, which I really need to work on anyway, so I'm okay with it. We'll call it 33 feet. What am I talking about? I don't need to work on those. That was hearted. Yeah, so with that birdie, that actually brings me back to four down, which I feel like is a pretty respectable score given the layout. I'll take it so far. Hole 14, which appears to be in the shorts today, is 245 feet to the left. The long pin position plays 290, right in between the trees up there. For this one, we're gonna go with our zone and just play a spike hyzer. Might be a little too wide. This is a little bit of a tester putt, but we just made one of those, so let's see if we can do it again. I do believe that this is the same putt distance, Charlie. Oh, Drano. Two for two on the circle's edge putts. Yeah, I think I'm clear, guys. The curse is broken. Whatever was affecting me last week is done and over with. Hole 15, 675 feet, par four. Uh, it is in the long position. The short pin is around 470 feet. I'm getting on this one that you probably want to play just something as far out there, even if it fades off to the left. You just want to avoid OB, which is the path and beyond. So we're just going to go back to this uh, boss. We do have a tailwind, but this thing's flippy, so I'm hoping I can get some turn out of it. I just mash it out there like 470 feet. Come out of it. All right, we're going to try one more with the Pharaoh. Fight out of it. That is mashed. That looks to be in a pretty good spot. If I had to guess with where my boss landed, probably about 370, maybe a little shorter, into the basket here. We're gonna take our uh, T-Bird, just play it up through the middle. This isn't actually that bad of a spot, even though it landed well short of where I wanted to be. Oh, too high. Hey, just for comparison, where my pharaoh ended up is right here. And I mean, this is just a zone shot into the basket. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm inside the circle. All right, and here's what I'm left with on the T-Bird shot. Came up a bit short. Oh, that's so lucky. <laughs> that was very lucky, but we're up there. Okay, I did not get as close as I thought I did, so... Another circle's edge putt. See if we can put a third one in in a row. Oh, 
Oh, so close. Player two. Of course, of course. Hole 16, 390 feet. It is in the long position today. Short pin will find you around 300. We're gonna go with the Pharaoh because I'm just liking how this thing is flying right now. See where we end up? Oh, I almost hit that tree. Keep going, baby. Okay, a bit short left. Let's try the other disc that's been bombing for me today. We got our boss. Oh, that's got the turn. Is it gonna carry though? Oh yeah, I think, uh, I think that one's like parked. We'll see when we get up there. All right, huge opportunity to get back to five down. See if we can do it. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, it never wanted to come back. Cool thing is the boss is absolutely parked and we still get to save our three. Okay, first of the last two holes, hole 17, currently is in the short 290 foot par three position. Uh, there's a little pond in the middle of this fairway that plays OB. The long position looks to be 360 feet just past all of it. So a full on water carry. If I'm feeling it, I might play one towards it so you can see. Almost forgot to mention, we're going quake for this one. Yeah, I think I parked it or I'm very close. All right, and just so you guys can get a look at the long pin that's across the pond, 360 feet. Looks like really the only thing to really beat is that tree that hangs off just up on the hill. We're gonna go leopard three for the long one. Fight out of it. Well, I'm, I think I threw that leopard three about 380 and a little bit to the right. Let's try once more with a T-bird. Yeah, I like that a lot better. Line drive, get past the tree. Yeah, I think that one's pretty close. You know, for what it's worth, I actually don't mind a lot of the little short pin positions because it gives you some more scoring opportunities within that like 250 to 350 range, which I think is totally fine, especially when you have so many long par fours kind of stretched throughout the course. I feel like it gives it some nice variety. And we'll talk on that here in a minute once we finish up. But before moving on to 18, just in case you're curious, Leopard 3 ended here. That's a birdie. T-Bird ended up here. Birdie. All right, hole 18. Probably not gonna be able to see it off the tee because the short pin position is an 870 foot par four and the long pin position is a 1,010 foot par five. I don't know which one it's in right now. I imagine if we see the short pin before the long pin, we know that it's in the long and we'll play it as a par five. Otherwise we'll play accordingly as a par four. Either way, Big thing you wanna do off the tee is get some distance. So, back to the boss again, and we're just gonna blast it out there. Come out of that. There might be water up there. It is in the short pin position, which I honestly think is probably the harder one to score on. But I also imagine where I'm at right now on my throw with the boss, it's probably gonna be out of bounds. I would imagine they'll probably draw a line on up here uh, to kind of clear this as out of bounds. So probably gonna to wanna to throw something more stable off the tee, uh, but, this is where we are. We're gonna play from it because I don't know if it is OB right now. We're gonna go rive on this and we don't really have much of a run up. So we're just gonna stand still from here. Yeah, I mean, from where I'm at either way, I don't think I'm getting up and down even if I had a run up. So we'll play for the par and call it good. Last little chip up shot for us to be able to finish out our round. Right up there, probably about 200, ish feet or so into the basket. It's gonna throw our zone. What kind of highlight would that have been if I just threw it in? You know, we had a little bit of a mid round slump, but we fought our way back, got a couple more birdies. If my mental math is correct, I should be sitting at five down. If not, you guys will know, the score will be on the screen. But let's quickly wrap up what my thoughts are on this course. So, pretty cool. For a private property, pretty well maintained. Lots of really nice long par fours. Good use of space. Some shorter scoreable par threes peppered throughout, which I honestly think adds a lot of nice variety to a course like this. You could probably have a couple less than there are right now, but ultimately they don't really hurt the design of the, of the course or the layout much. Walks between baskets aren't super long and there's nothing that's super hard to find. 
The only nice thing about this golf park basket is you have the little arrow in the bottom of the basket that shows you where to go next. Overall, given the conditions that I played the course in, the layout, all of that stuff, I'd probably give it a three and a half out of five. The only things that I would do to really improve the course are really just maintenance. Um, obviously, I know that that could probably be very hard. I can't imagine the uh, cost of keeping this grass cut out here because I mean the entire course is just all grass but as far as course design parts of it and being able to improve the score I think honestly if you just push those par fours back a little more and on some of them the long pin position is and some of them were just in the short pin today uh, but the long pin positions Having those over 700 feet, that's where you start really getting the scoring separation because it either requires you have two 350 foot shots dialed in or you have one ripping shot off the tee and then you have a nice up shot. So it just adds a lot more difficulty to the game. I think if you can push those back just a tad, it would add more to the course. And I had to take a little bit off the course because they are using disc golf park baskets. These are my least favorite basket in disc golf. I just feel like they spit out more than anything else. Granted, they caught today, so I don't know. Maybe there's something special about Blue Flame. I'm not gonna hate on it, but that's my thoughts. At this point, if you're still here, I appreciate you. And if you wanna see more content like this where we do course reviews, disc golf challenges, mini games, all that stuff, be sure to like and subscribe to this video. Comment down below if you have any ideas you'd like us to try, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.